Hey people, welcome back to the Snooker Shed and it's great to be back and making another video here in the shed. This one is going to go to Tarka Sisso. I hope I'm getting that right, Tarka Sisso, who's asked me to make a video on where my eyes go when I'm playing. So where does our eyes go? Where should our eyes go? Well, that's a matter of debate, but let's have a little look at where your eyes may go when you're playing Q-Sports. Okay, let's get cracked onto the video then. And what I think I'm going to do in this video is divide it up into three parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the most common places that people look when they're delivering the cue. And we've got one, the cue ball, and two, we've got the object ball. And in the third part of this session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an idea of where I look when I'm playing the game. So that's really through my pre-shot routine and shot to shot. So let's look at the object ball watcher and this is what I do. So when I'm about to deliver the cue, my eyes are drawn to the contact point where I want the cue ball to go on the object ball. Let's have a wee look at the disadvantages and advantages of this method. Okay, so let's look at the advantages of looking at the contact point. It just actually struck me there that every time I've made a, a YouTube video has always been on this three-fifths table. And it's been an absolutely fantastic bit of kit to help me learn how to play snooker. But you never know, one day I'm going to have to get a big boy table. But anyway, I digress. So, the advantages of looking at the contact point. And first of all, what I'm going to say is that there is only one contact point that will send the object ball in the direction you want it to go. And if that is a pocket, then it is directly behind the pocket, the centre of the pocket. So if we know that, then we could send the cue ball to that point, staring at it. Now, the big advantage for that is learning. I believe it's learning because when you watch where the cue ball strikes the object ball, you will then know if you've struck it thick or thin or perfect. So that's one of the big advantages. The other big advantage for me is you're actually telling your brain where you want the object ball to go. So you're looking at a space on that ball and you're saying, I want you to go there. And it's kind of like throwing a stone. You don't look at the stone while you throw it and the dart player certainly doesn't look at his arrow as he throws it. He looks at the bullseye. Did you see the size of that creepy wee spider that's on my roof? He needs to go. I'll sort him out later. But anyway, so what's the disadvantage of being someone that stares at the object ball while they deliver the cue? Well, the, the obvious disadvantage is you can't see where you're hitting the cue ball. And the main one for me is you then could apply unwanted side. And if you're applying unwanted side, and I know I've went on about unwanted side on several videos because it's absolutely massive to our game. So if we're applying that unwanted side, then the cue ball is going to take a path that we don't expect it to go. And therefore, looking at the contact point makes no difference because you're never going to get it there. Anyway, people, I've added some bloopers into the videos because these are really difficult to make. And I really struggle at times. So have a look at the well, end. Let's look at the advantages of someone that looks at the cue ball as they deliver the cue. And the most obvious one that comes out is accuracy of tip to cue ball. So if you're watching where your tip's striking the cue ball, then you're going to be so much more accurate on where you strike it. Like the same was where you focus your eyes on the contact point, this is the exact same. Your eyes are looking at a part of that cue ball that you intend to strike. So let's look at the disadvantage of staring at the cue ball. And for me, it all comes down to the line of aim. I think this method relies so heavily on the fact that you have chosen the correct line, your body's on the shot line, and your cue, tip to butt, is all on the line of aim. So much so that you don't need to look at where the cue ball is going to travel, that you can stare at the cue ball. That, for me, I think is a massive disadvantage because most of us don't actually get down on the line of aim consistently. And that then becomes a problem because we're going to miss the shot. 
Okay, so let's answer Tarasescu's question that he asked right at the beginning. Where are my eyes focused when I deliver the cue? And we know mine's is the contact point. And I'm going to give you a few personal advantages why I think that's a good place to be. Now, if you're a cue ball watcher, I want you to leave some comments and debates in the channel with this one because as a coach we are all needing to learn every day is a learning day and understanding everybody's way how they play this wonderful game makes coaches much better and there's a good video coming up soon about what a coach can and cannot do for a player and the role in the player's journey in snooker but anyway, let's go back to the advantages, I think, of being an object ball watcher are. Well, the first thing, we talk about the advantage of being someone that looks at the cue ball as they deliver the tip. Well, in the pre-shot routine, in my pre-shot routine, I've added checks as best I can to make sure that the tip is going to be striking the cue ball where I want it to strike. The other advantage I always feel is, that, like I said, we can, co we can concentrate more on the line of aim. So when you stand at the shot, you look at the shot, you can walk in staring at that contact point. Now, normally when you walk, you normally walk in a straight line. Walking in on the shot is no different. Choose the line, walk in, get down, and then we do our tip to cue ball checks. So that is two pluses for looking at the contact point and then of course like i said before when you're looking at the contact point you could see where the cue ball strikes the object ball that then gives you an idea if you've struck it in the right place if you've had an unwanted side etc and that then helps you learn so what we're going to look at now finally and really quickly is where my eyes go as i'm playing a shot and i think this is really important if you've stuck around this long to just watch this last wee section because some of the tips in this part will definitely help you in your game. Okay, so let's have a wee look at what I'm doing with my eyes at any given shot when I'm playing on the table. So, first thing I'm going to do is find the line of aim. So I'm looking at the contact point directly in the line with the back of the pocket. I'm keeping my eyes on that now. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the relationship between the centre of the cue ball and that contact point. Once I've found the two lines, so cue ball to object ball, object ball to pocket, that's me on the given line of aim. The next thing I'm going to do is get down on the shot. So here's the first check that hopefully eliminates that unwanted side that we spoke about as a disadvantage of an object ball watcher. The first thing I do here is put my tip to the cue ball where I intend to strike it and I stop. I make sure I'm in the right place. Once I continue to the feathers, what I'm watching here is I'm solely watching the cue ball as the tip comes back and forward, making sure that the tip is going to strike the cue ball where intended. Okay, so the feathers are complete. And now I'm moving on to the backswing. And as soon as my backswing starts, my eyes will revert straight to the contact point on the object ball. That's where I'm going to stare from now on. The backswing's complete, there's a pause, then I deliver. Once I've delivered and struck the cue ball, my eyes are still on that contact point. Once the contact has taken place, I could check if it's the correct contact, and then my eyes will follow the object ball to its destination. In this case, it was the pocket. As soon as it goes in the pocket, my eyes will divert to the cue ball and see where it's going to go. So moving on to the last part, and even though I'm playing in the snooker shed myself, I'm picking out the balls myself, even if I had an opponent that was doing that and I had to travel across the table, my eyes would always be firmly focused on the table. And that holds your concentration to the job in hand. Let's just say you're not looking at the table. So if I was to wander around the shed, I would be looking at, yes, there's the snooker shed, up here we've got Stephen Henry, we've got Dave Gilbert, and then we're going to finish off with Ross Muir. Now, my focus and attention has been taken up with the stuff in the shed rather than 
what I'm doing on the table. And if you're in any given club, the table should be clear of obstructions, so you're not going to fall and hurt yourself. Also, in clubs, your focus could be taken away by other participants playing the game, memorabilia on the wall, club announcements, whatever it is. So try and keep your eyes focused on the table because that's where the concentration needs to be. Okay, people, thank you very much for watching to the end. In Tar Cisco, I hope that answers your question and I hope that it's answered a few questions to other people that are watching the video right now. If you've got any comments about cue ball watchers, object ball watchers that you think I've missed, add them in. It's always a learning game. And that's me off now for a cup of tea. And I hope it answers Tarasico, Tarasico's question. <laughs> okay, people, people, people. <laughs> and that will reduce inaccuracies and where he's heading, 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 heading.